Now, folks, I've got a lot to cram into a very little space, but I'm good at that. So for right now, just remember this. This angle you're seeing right now, I'm the only one to ever publish actual, you know, in-depth crime scene photos. And this angle right here is most likely the angle at which Greg Floyd started shooting at Lee Kenny's car and put that windshield bullet in there that Kelly Ayotte never analyzed. Mm -hmm. More on that later. Good day, people. As you watch this video, ask yourselves the following question. Where in the hell were any of these people when John Smith and I were busy gathering and analyzing the entire criminal files that I have maintained to this day? Well, folks, I have a birthday update for you about the exploitation in this case. My birthday is the 14th of April, 1965, a different year than Greg Floyd, but on the same day. Now, I've known this for some time now because I was one of the first on the scene to investigate, along with one John Smith, a New Hampshire native with experience in criminology, who also poured his heart and soul and money and time into investigating the mysterious disappearance of one Maura Murray. I was also there with Lico's friend Oliver Ruff at the State House demanding an investigation. Nobody else was around, okay? I was also there shooting these pictures of Floyd when he was convicted of yet another abusive crime. Uh, and I was the one who sued the state and the town to get footage of Corporal Norman Bruce McKay using chemical weapons on a young girl. And I was the one who exposed the state's failure to release all of Greg Floyd's criminal and military AWOL records. I got them from an honest public safety attorney, one Marta Modigliani. Check the files. Now keep in mind that Casey Sherman was around then too. But Casey came to meet me at the Dutch Treat one day that Maura Murray's people were in fact throwing a party for me. Uh, for suing the state of New Hampshire and the town of Franconia for vital information, including protocols showing that Bruce McKay violated many, you know, hardcore rules on 511 designed to uh, de-escalate volatility, uh, as well as video of Bruce McKay OC spraying and flailing on a young girl named Sarah. This in addition to the affidavit I got from Miss B about Bruce McKay sticking a knife to her privates for no lawful reason. My grandfather founded the tennis camp after World War II as kind of uh it was as it was doing a good deed for the world. You know, you go to war and you see all sorts of terrible things that really shouldn't be happening in mankind. <laughs> Five years ago, I went to his superior, Taylor, uh -huh. and I said, get rid of him. He's a danger to the department in the town. I mean, the whole thing with Lisbon, the dust up over there, taking the frequencies out of his radio, mm -hmm. banning him from going through there, doing police work out of district. It's all part of his history. Yeah. And he was a rogue in every sense to other law enforcement and to people, particularly uh, young men and women. <clears throat> Now, I had also gone to court and obtained the files on cases identical to the 2003 uh, trashing that Lico received from Bruce McKay and two other jackbooted cops for no reason at Fox Hill Park. In emails with me, Casey Sherman admitted he publicly stated that Lico Kenny wasn't a good kid at all, and he also incorrectly claimed that Bruce McKay had probable cause to detain Lico Kenny uh, in 2003. Well, he's full of shit because Lico's license was valid. I ran it myself. And the contemporaneous cases of State v. Nathan Wright and State v. William Miller all prove that Judge Peter Sear agreed that the stops were unconstitutional for blocking egress without probable cause. And who the hell is Casey to make that determination against me? I've actually won criminal trials and have them on videotape to prove it. <laughs> Responsive to my request as far as the 2003 arrest reports and 2002 arrest reports, I was seeking documentation that would support their contention that it was a suspicious area in any way. Now there were a number of arrests, of, uh, excuse me, a number of arrests back then 
But as I proved by the record, all of those arrests were thrown out because they were unconstitutional. The person was seized without probable cause. And even in Lico Kenny's case, his case was not crossed. So that would have been responsive documentation to what I saw. I got none of it. So I think on his face right there uh, is another violation of RSA 91A uh, in letter and spirit. You know, for some of this would say, might makes right. Okay, and we all know that law enforcement has a lot of might. I'm a former assistant attorney general. I know law enforcement has a lot of might and power. Okay? These are historical proceedings. Now, these interlopers, Lance and Tim uh, and Casey, have a documented history of ignoring us after they gleaned the information they wanted to use so that they could continue their apparently paid work with Oxygen Channel and Casey can work on his movie with John Stimson, okay? Now, someone else wrote me recently and referenced them, so I reached out to them. Uh, as far as Tim and uh, uh, Lance, okay? I'm not going to divulge her identity at this point, but I'll tell you this. These guys also made a video in which they made fun of John after they got the information they wanted from him, and they told him to just go away and refer to him as a crazy, troll, pot-smoking, hippie loser. Because he's been sort of like uh, Barbara Streisand with uh, farewell tours on the Maura Murray uh, disappearance case. <laughs> right, or like Rolling Stones kind of thing. Like... Yeah, just, just go away. Just stop saying right. you're going to go away. Right, go right, away. right. Just go away. They then rejected his registered mail, asking him not to use his information because his information, unlike mine, was not public record. Okay? He says they threatened him, and I believe him. He says they told him, if you press this, it's going to get ugly. Hmm. To hell with you guys. If you press me, it's going to get ugly beyond measure for you. Now. Apparently, they do not want to talk to me on the phone, answer my emails, or take my phone calls, uh, or text messages, I mean. But, uh, no shit. So I sent them these, uh, no fucking shit. Uh, and certified mail, um, which, of course, as you can see, returned to sender. Then they team up with this character, James Renner, who's also from Cleveland, as am I. But Renner worked for the uh, inferior newspaper, the Cleveland Scene, if I recall correctly, while I worked for the Cleveland Edition. You don't even have to ask which publication was mostly about music and which one was mostly about editorial content, using writers from the recently defunct Cleveland Daily, the Cleveland Press. Okay? So, you can ask publisher Bill Gunlock. Uh, he's still a friend of mine. I see him in New York from time to time. Now, and Tim and Lance told me to go away, too after they had their interview with me, which I'll publish in its entirety later. I've got it saved, okay? It's my intellectual property. I'm gonna publish that later. And uh, they needed that so they could tie Lico and Mora together and have Renner accuse Fred, meanwhile, of diddling his daughter with no indicia of credibility whatsoever, all right? Now, watch out for defamation, you guys, and don't even think about threatening me. I'm the attorney here, none of you are. And I have attorneys, too, so you don't scare me one fucking bit. Now, let's not forget about Casey Sherman again, the original interloper. As you can see from these emails, Casey demanded $1,000 from a public college to appear. He failed to appear at a bookstore appearance, and my people and I, we had put out money and time for that and had to remove posters, as you'll see from the email here from Mickey Duram. Instead, he ran off with John Stimson and started making a movie based on his sorry-ass book that was, in my opinion, largely self-published. And oh, the teacher of that class? He's now the police chief of Somerset. And he agrees with his statement that he allowed me to use at our website. Alright? I spoke to his class at my own expense, as seen in our trailer video for this production. Circle of Stones, the Lego Kenny story. Because it's not just a legal Kenny story, actually. It's a story of the entire town versus the establishment and Norman Bruce McKay. Not much more on this later, but for now, just think about this. There's a special place in hell for each of you guys who's come in here and use the tragedy of the town for your personal gain while you use information garnered by John Smith and me. All right? So... This is going to the Oxygen Channel. I'm not afraid of you. And you guys are going to deal with it, because I'm tired. You thought I moved away to Seattle. You thought I kind of slipped out of it. You thought you could run one past me. You can never run one past me, guys. Ever. And John, too. All right? 
He doesn't have the legal acumen that I do. But that's why we're working together to slam you for your bullshit.